Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, the resource scheduler for ski clubs. So today we're going to be talking about one of our extra cost features, the resource scheduler, and how you can use it for ski trips or lodges that you might have on your property. Before we get started, we're going to go through just a couple of housekeeping items. So all of your phones and microphones are muted. And if you have any questions, as I mentioned before, enter them into the chat window. Devin is in our chat and he's going to be answering all all of the questions that you have related to today's webinar. So you don't have to wait until the end to ask your questions. You can ask those live. And of course, if there's anything that Devin thinks that we can demo live, we'll go ahead and do that once we open up the floor for questions at the very end of our webinar. A recording of this webinar is going to be available on our YouTube channel within a couple of days. So if you aren't able to stay for the entire webinar, or if you just want to review everything or send it to people within your organization, that'll be available on our YouTube channel within a couple of days. In addition to Devin being in our chat, we also have Steve. Steve is our ski club sales guru. He is going to be here to answer any questions that you might have, and we will show his contact information again at the very end of the webinar. He is the person to go to if you have more questions about what Club Express can do for ski clubs. He is also going to be your contact if you have questions at all about Club Express. And of course, if you want to set up a demo and a free trial. In addition to being able to find our videos on our website, you can also find all of our upcoming webinars on clubexpress.com by going to the calendar. Now, if you want to register for a webinar in advance, that's great. A perk to that is that once you register online, you have the ability to enter in questions and items that you might want demonstrated during that week's webinar. So of course, all of our webinar announcements get sent out to all of our administrators. But again, if you register in advance, if there's anything that you'd like to see or have a question about when you see that topic, throw that in as a question and we'll demo that live and roll that into our webinar. And of course, as I mentioned, all of our videos and tutorials are on our YouTube channel. This webinar is going to be available within a couple of days. When you're visiting our YouTube channel, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. It isn't just so we get extra followers. It's also so that you get notified every time we upload a new video or new tutorial. So make sure to hit subscribe. And if you are using Club Express, and particularly if you are enjoying using Club Express, we would absolutely love to hear from you. Uh, leaving a review not only helps us figure out what we're doing right, what we can improve on, but it also helps other potential customers figure out if Club Express is right for them. So your review is really valuable, not just to us, but to anyone else that we might be working with in the future. Go to clubexpress.com slash reviews and leave us a review on any one of the review sites that you see listed. And of course, uh, something to note is that the first 50 people who leave us a review do get an an Amazon gift card. So go to clubexpress.com slash reviews, leave us a review and let us know how we're doing. So today's topic, as I mentioned, is going to cover the resource scheduler. The resource scheduler is an extra cost feature and the price is $500. It's a one-time fee. That means that you purchase that extra feature for your website once and you have it for the entire life of your website. So when you purchase the resource scheduler, or if you have it now and you haven't yet activated it, your resource scheduler is going to be in test mode. Now, if you attended our webinars on the Club Express storefront, which is a built-in feature, it's not an extra cost feature, the storefront is also in test mode when you first activate it. Now, in both of these cases, and I'll focus more on the resource scheduler, it's in test mode, and that means that it's not going to generate any transactions while you're testing the feature out. So you want to make sure that the entire process behaves the way you intended to prior to making it available to members and non-members, which is why we give you that opportunity to try it out in test mode. So what you're able to do is 
go ahead and activate that. You give our support team a call to let them know that you would like the resource scheduler. They put it in test mode, and then you see if that's right for you. Once you have had a chance to test it out, then you can make it available to your members and your non-members. Now, this is one of those instances, and we're going to talk about some tips and tricks to keep in mind when you're using the resource scheduler. This is one of those instances where it would be beneficial to set up a test member account. Now, as we're going through the resource scheduler today, we're going to be looking at it from three different perspectives, from the perspective of a non-member, from the perspective of a member, and the perspective of an administrator. So this is, again, going to be one of those instances where if you have not already set up a test member member account or a dummy member account to use for your own testing purposes, this is going to be one of those cases where it's really beneficial for you. So let's talk about some of the other things that we're going to be going through that you can do with our resource scheduler. You can, of course, manage reservations for members and non-members. As an admin, you can make them, you can cancel them, you can change them, you can approve them. You can approve individual reservations either for everyone or for non-members only. And you can also block entire days for individual resources. We're going to go through what that means and what a resource is and what a reservation is. You can have separate fees for both members and non-members. You can also have separate fees for weekends and weekdays. You also have the ability through the use of another built-in feature to issue discounts for volunteers. One of the features that we'll take a look at very briefly today would be our discount coupon code feature. That is a built-in feature. It's not an extra cost feature, and it gives you a chance to reward uh, members of yours who have worked really hard to help set up different events. Perhaps you want to offer them a stay for free. And of course, you have the ability to reject or cancel a reservation. So when we talk about reservation approvals, we'll see how you can actually decline a reservation, how you can cancel a reservation. And of course, we'll take a look at how members can manage their own reservations right through the member profile. In our demo today, first up, we're going to talk about how we've set up some resources, how we're going to configure pricing making reservations and approving and declining and canceling those reservations. Now I'm gonna switch gears here and bring us over to one of our demo sites. So this is the Northwest Balloon Club. It is one of our demo sites that we use, not a real club. And what I'm gonna do is show you how I have set up my resources that I'm using today. And what I wanna do is give a little bit of a background. So what I've done is I have created a trip that the Northwest Balloon Club is taking to go skiing. What the Northwest Balloon Club has done is they have rented out a giant five bedroom house and they're now asking members to reserve rooms within that house. So we've already handled the reservation, let's say through Airbnb. We're now asking members and potentially non-members to reserve specific rooms within the house or maybe just one bed out of a room. So if you have a room that has, let's say, two queen beds and maybe a rollaway bed, you can reserve either the entire room for a large family or a large group, or you can reserve individual beds. So what I want to do first is take a look back at our control panel. We're going to navigate to the back end of the resource scheduler, and we're going to see how I've set up all of these resources and in the process, take a look at how the resource scheduler works. So I'm going to go into my club tab. It's going to be the fourth tab from the left. Keep in mind that if you have renamed your club type, this tab won't be labeled club. It might be called something different like league or association. And right under the club tab, we can see that one of my website modules is the resource scheduler, and you'll see that it's in test mode. So I'll go ahead and click that. And again, to reiterate, the resource scheduler is going to behave the exact same way in test mode as it would live. The only difference is that transactions are not going to be created when you're in test mode. So you won't have to go in and fake a payment or comp a payment in order to complete this process and test it for yourself. So when I reach my resource manager, the first page that I'm going to see is 
resources. And we have that familiar search function at the very top of our screen here. I am going to only search for available resources. I have a handful of other resources that I added that I've decommissioned for the purposes of this webinar, just because I don't want to have them show up in my list. I wanted our list to be a little more concise. If I go ahead and select my decommissioned and unavailable resources and select search one more time, I can see all of those resources that I have removed from my list. So the important thing to remember is that you have those resources that are available. Once they become unavailable, perhaps you're no longer using those facilities, you can make them unavailable and they won't appear for members or non-members when they're viewing the resource scheduler. Go ahead and uncheck these and select search one more time. We are going to focus today on a Mammoth Mountain uh, cabin that we've rented here. Now you'll see that I have individual resources listed here that I'm managing. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start where you would start, which is setting up a category. We can see that next to my resource name, everything is categorized under the same category. So let's see how we got there and why we would choose to group everything under the same category. When I visit my category manager, I can see several different categories that I've created. Within balloons, for example, I have three separate balloons that can be rented through the club. And with my Airbnb, I have 10 separate rooms that can be rented. So this allows us to separate out resources. Now, really what the resource scheduler is you know, designed for is something like a homeowners association where you might have a tennis facility or perhaps a couple of pools and you allow people to reserve out time at even say a clubhouse. So you might have, let's say a category called tennis courts and you might have three separate tennis courts that you can rent out. So that's where we have categories and followed by resources. Now, another benefit to having a category set up, one category for all of those related resources, is if I add a category, in this case, I'm going to select the edit icon, which is just my quick way of showing everything that's on the add category screen, but I've have, I have everything filled in for you. So if I select the edit icon, it's going to take me to the same page that I'd see if I selected add a new category, all the information is going to be filled in. So this is a great way to sort of, you know, if you're new to your organization and you're maybe taking on a role that you haven't been in for the first time, you can go back and take a look at how things may have been set up prior to you by just clicking that edit icon next to any feature on your site. You can see how someone before you would have configured it and you can copy those settings moving forward. Now, when I set up this category, I kept in mind that for all of the separate rooms that I'm creating, a lot of the settings are going to be the same. All of these settings that you see here for the category for that entire set of rooms can be copied over to those individual rooms. So I can do this once with the category and make very few changes when I'm adding individual resources, because what's going to happen is those individual rooms and resources are going to adopt the settings that I have at the category level if I choose. And we'll go through that in just a moment. Now, in my basic settings, I'm going to point out some of the important things to note. If you are considering using this for a ski trip, if you're considering using this for ski facilities and rooms and lodges that you have, I'm going to go over those settings specifically and how they affect the end result. At the very top, I have my reservation type. I've selected daily because these are rooms that I'm renting out almost as though I'm renting out uh, rooms at a hotel. My resource category status. I've selected available, which means that the category and all of the resources in that category are going to be available for your members and non-members to actually reserve. Now, I've made the category available, but I can make individual rooms unavailable as I need. I am allowing non-members to reserve. That is entirely up to you. If you don't open up your ski trips to non-members, we can make it members and admins only. And I've said that every single reservation requires administrative approval. And we're going to talk about why I require approval in just a moment when we talk about those individual resources. I've included a financial account, contact information, and under my reservation length, I've just put that the minimum amount is one unit and I'm only allowing 
members and non-members to reserve up to five nights in a row. So I'm not allow- allowing them to reserve any longer than that. I just want my maximum to be five nights. Now you can change this. You can make it longer. If you have a facility that's open for a lot longer, you can make it shorter. Under my reservation fee, I entered in a fee. I'm not actually using that fee for most of my resources. Each of my resources has a completely different fee. The rooms are different styles. They're different sizes. So that's sort of dictated my pricing, but I can enter in one fee and have the same fee applied to every single resource without me having to do anything. I'm using this resource for overnight reservations. So that means that my resources are going to be available from about the afternoon until the next day. So we're using this as a true daily overnight reservation. Now, if we had not checked this box, using those daily reservations, we would just be reserving it for the day. And it wouldn't necessarily look like we're reserving overnight reservations. The maximum number of days in advance, I have left that blank. So there isn't a maximum number of days that someone can actually go in and set up a a reservation for themselves. I can set up a reservation for this weekend today. And then finally, My resource usage description, this is what appears when someone actually reserves a resource. What is it going to look like for other members or other non-members visiting your resource scheduler page? What are they going to see? At the bare minimum, you can leave it empty. I can also show that it's just reserved. If you're keeping members information to yourself and you don't want to reveal that to other people, you can always just say that it is a reserved block without noting who actually reserved it. I can show their username, the usage description only, and we'll talk about the usage description. It's something that the member or non-member actually fills in when they make that reservation or both the name and the description. Now, in this case, I am asking every user to enter the names of everyone that they plan on having stay in the room in the usage description. The reason I'm doing that is if you'll recall, I mentioned that we are renting out a giant cabin where I'm potentially allowing members to reserve an entire room or an individual bed in a room. So I want people to be able to see who else is going to be sharing that room with them. Perhaps they want to share a room with someone that they shared a room with in the past. They have the ability to look that up, see who's in which room, and potentially grab that room. So at the very bottom, I am allowing my user notifications. User notifications are a way for members who reserve a room to send out an email to other members that they might be sharing that resource with. So when I go in, I can send a notification to my sister if I'm reserving a room for the both of us. Notify administrators or the contact for the resource scheduler as soon as a reservation is made. I've also turned that on. And if we want to prompt for setup instructions, we could do this. So one of the things that you'll see is that in my user agreement, which we'll talk about in just a moment, I am asking all of my members and non-members to clean up after themselves. We aren't offering any housekeeping as part of this. So I don't have any time for setup or takedown like you would maybe for a clubhouse or a meeting room. So I've left that unchecked. And then I've added in my reservation rules for every single resource within this category. These rules will appear when the member or non-member is attempting to make a reservation. So they're going to see that I do require that names be entered in that usage description so that we can see exactly who's going to be staying in that room. Now, keep in mind that these rooms are going to be reserved by one person. So we do want to even have a clearer record of everyone that's going to be staying at this particular house over that time period. Now, this is how you would set up, again, a category. Once we've set up the category, that's when we go back and actually start adding in those individual resources in that category. But first, let's take a look at a couple of other things that you see here. I have my long description, my formatted description for the entire resource. So I've entered in just some basic information letting folks know that they can reserve a whole room or they can reserve individual beds, letting them know the rules for those reservations. So in this case, we have rates included with the room. Each room has a separate weekday rate and a separate weekend rate. 
we also have a minimum stay. So when we're taking a look and approving reservations, we have the ability to check if someone is meeting those minimum requirements. And then finally, we have our contact information. This is our advanced content editor. You're probably already familiar with this. And if you aren't, we have plenty of videos to show you how to use it. So this allows you to, again, create a nice formatted description that's going to be visible on the front page of your resource scheduler to all of your members. I also have a user agreement that I can use. The user agreement is going to come up for every single reservation, and it requires the user to check off a box saying that they agree prior to being able to actually make that reservation. So in this user agreement, I'm just letting everyone know that if there's any damage to the rooms or if they're in violation of either the agreement that we have with, let's say, Airbnb or the agreements that they have with our club, we could potentially freeze or terminate their membership or take away privileges. So we've just included that in our user agreement or our waiver. We also have the ability to edit daily options for these resources. Now, we're not going to edit the daily options at the category level. We're going to edit the daily options at the resource level. So we're going to hold off on that for just a moment. And then last, of course, we have our display sequencer. We can set the display sequence for each of our individual resources. We can also set the display sequence for all of our categories as well. Now, once we've set up the category, we're going to go right back into our resource manager, and we are going to take a look at some of these resources. Now, what I want to actually talk about is how I've set up each individual resource and how that's going to look from the front end. With several of our rooms, let's take the back room, for example, you can reserve the whole room or you can reserve bed A or bed B. So I have added in the option for both. Now, the process for saying if the room is reserved as a whole, we have to take away the ability to reserve beds A and beds B, that's something that you do as an administrator. It's not something that happens automatically. However, the process is really simple, and we're going to go through how we would do that in just a moment. But let's take a look at how I've set up individual bed A. I'm going to select that familiar edit icon. If I select add resource, it's going to show me the exact same screen. I'm just showing you one that I've set up previously. Now, one thing that I want to talk about with setup, you saw that there were a lot of resources, a lot of moving parts. It did take me a bit to set this up. It's not something that you're going to be able to set up in 10 minutes. This is going to take a little bit of time. You're going to want to make sure you have a chart, a checklist. I'll show you an example of my chart, just a way that I kept all of my ducks in a row as I was creating these resources. I'd go in and try to make a reservation, realize I didn't turn a setting on that I really meant to turn on, and I'd have to go back and make those changes. This is why these resources are in test mode. This is why we give you an option to test it out. So fret not, I make mistakes too, and it's just going to give you a better chance at being more successful in the future because now I know the things that I tended to miss the last time that I did this. When I add or edit a resource, I am limited at first to just what do I want to call this resource? What's going to be my display name that I see on the admin side? What's the category? Now, other fields are available, but if I don't touch any of those fields, this resource is automatically going to adopt all of the settings that I used at the category level. So if you have, let's say, rooms that are all going to be the same price, they're all going to have the same settings. If you may not even really be including a picture, let's say instead of including separate pictures for every room that you have, maybe you're just including a link to the Airbnb and saying, here's the room that you should look for. This is, you know, your room is the blue room. You can do that. I went a little bit further and I actually edited some of the settings. So if I click this drop down arrow, that's when I can see some of the settings I'm using category settings and some of them I've actually changed. So at the very top, all of my status, my access, my approval, I'm using those category settings. It's going to be available to non-members and members, and I'm requiring approval for, for all of it. I'm using my category settings for my default and minimum and maximum lengths of my reservation. Price, I'm not using the category setting. Price, I'm using my own settings because this particular bed is going to be $125 a night for a member and $150 for a non-member. And then following that, at the very bottom, I've included a picture of just this specific room. 
Now, if I go back and take a look at the same room, but I'm looking at the whole room, really not much changes. I've included all of the same information. The price is a little bit different. So instead of reserving a single bed for 125, a member would reserve both for 250. So again, all of those settings are going to use the category settings. I have the option to include a description for each individual resource. I can have a separate user agreement for each individual resource. And I have those daily options, which we're going to talk about in just a moment here. Now, what I want to do is just take a very quick break. Now that we've seen the actual setup, I want to take a look at what this is going to look like from a member's perspective. So I'm going to visit the resource schedule. I want you to keep in mind I'm visiting this from an admin's login right now. Just very quickly, the administrator is the only one who can see these unavailable reservation options. Members are only going to see the Mammoth Mountain Airbnb option. I can go ahead and expand this. We see right at the top here, that's that description that I have for the entire category, and it's right at the top. So that's the first thing that your members are going to see, even if they don't expand. And we can see all of the rooms that I've added. Now, next to each room, you're going to see that description that I've created for that room. So we have our back view, the whole room. I've included a picture of the room and a slideshow when it would ever, when it decides to load itself. I have a slideshow of all of the pictures of the house. So I've just included that and I've let people know whether or not their reservation is going to be for an entire room or just one bed. And we have a listing of all of those items here. And if I select reserve, that's when I can see all of the reservations that have been created and the space that's available for me. So let's go back and we're going to visit the resource scheduler again as an administrator. So I have all of these items set up. We have separate pricing for both an entire room and for an individual room. We also have daily options. So I mentioned that you can also set up separate pricing for weekdays and weekends. You would do that entirely through customized daily options, which is this last category here. Now, because each of my rooms has a completely different price, I had to do this for every single room because my pricing is going to change completely. If I had wanted to make this a little bit easier on myself, I could have said that every room is the same price, every bed is the same price. but. In this case, I didn't. So we visited each individual resource and set these customized settings for each one. For the entire room, I've said that in addition to having separate pricing for members and non-members, we also have separate pricing for Fridays and Saturdays. So on Saturdays, the price per night goes up from, let's say it was maybe 225 or something to 260. And the price also went up for non-members. And the status is available because we're using that category setting. Now, let's say that instead of wanting a higher price point for the weekends versus the weekdays, you want to do something like maybe make the reserve the actual room unavailable during the week. It's only available on weekends. Maybe it's a lodge that you own that is only available on weekends because it's run by volunteers. So you have people that maybe come up on a Friday afternoon to just make sure everything's okay and they're out of there by Sunday. I can go into any one of these days, customize it, and just say it's unavailable on Wednesdays. That just means that every Wednesday, that reservation time is going to be blocked out. No one's going to be able to reserve it during that time for any amount of money. And I can do that for every single day. I am actually going to leave this selected as unavailable. I'll go ahead and save my changes. And if we go right back into our resource scheduler and we select reserve one more time, and we take a look at Wednesdays. We can see that the whole room, our back whole room on Wednesday, unavailable. Next Wednesday, also unavailable. So that just blocks out entire days for you. Now, a couple of other things to note, and I'll just go right back into my edit options. Just like a lot of our other modules. So the storefront, for example, has two separate admin screens. So does our resource manager. This is just where we set up our resources. 
If we want to visit where our reservations happen, we would select the reservation manager button at the very top of our screen. We have reports and exports that are available that list out all of the reservation options, all of the rooms that we have listed or the resources that we have listed. And under my configure items, I can change, we'll go into our options here. I can change where I visit when I'm selecting this option from the control panel, and I can change a couple of other default options. And we'll go right back in. I can change my main page HTML. So that's just the entire resource scheduler page. I can add some text at the very top that wouldn't be paired with an individual category. It would instead be for the entire selection of resources. And I also have my cancellation policy, excuse me, cancellation policy. My cancellation policy is something that's visible on the front end of the resource scheduler for members and non-members. They click a button and the policy opens up for them. So this is where I've just outlined how our organization is going to handle cancellations. Cancellations are allowed 14 days before, and we, we keep a small fee um, if the cancellation is made within a certain time frame. So let's talk about where we've come from and how we've set up all of our resources. So I mentioned that I created a little chart for myself just to keep things uh, separated. Here's a copy of my chart. I use this and referred to it all the time when I was setting up my individual resources. It was really difficult to keep track of those prices in my head. We've talked about category settings versus resource settings. So when we set up our, our categories, we are creating settings that we are going to use as the default settings. When we set up individual resources, it's going to save us a ton of time. It's going to save you even more time if all of your pricing happens to be the same. We also set up some weekend rates. So we visited our daily options. We even made one of those resources completely unavailable on one particular day. We created descriptions for each one of those resources. And we also took a look at our user agreements and our cancellation policy. So again, it's going to take you a little bit of time to set up all of those individual resources. However, it's worth it. And it just makes sure that the user experience for members and non-members is a little more smooth. Now, what I want to do is switch gears just a little bit, and we are going to take a look at reserving some resources as a member. So what I want to do, or excuse me, we're doing a non-member first. So before I log in as a member, I'm going to go through this process as a non-member. And the process is going to be very similar. Really, the main difference is that the non-member is going to have to put in their contact information, and they're also going to have separate pricing, but they won't know that necessarily. So I'll go ahead and select the resource scheduler. I've placed it on my non-member menu. You'll see non-members are the only ones who get to see, who are, excuse me, admins are the only people who are going to see all of those unavailable resources. You'll see that as a non-member, and even when I sign in as a member, I'm not going to be able to see those. I'll go ahead and select reserve. I can view all of the individual resources. I can go through and choose which one I want ahead of time. So let's say that maybe I'd like the front view room. I'd maybe like bed A, or perhaps I would even be interested in reserving the entire room. I'll go ahead and select reserve. When I get there, I can see that name and usage description. So as a non-member, you know, maybe I've joined this organization in the past for a couple of events. I happen to know a couple of these people, uh, you know, perhaps I actually know Colleen. So I'm going to go ahead and say, I'd like to stay in Colleen's room. That sounds like a good time. So I will go ahead and select, let's say three nights for this particular reservation. And it is going to be Blanche and her husband, Mark. I'll go ahead and select next. I can see a complete breakdown of the cost. I can see my reservations working out nicely. I'll go ahead and select next. And now we get to my user agreement. I can read this and go ahead and say that I agree. This is the user agreement that states that there are repercussions for messing up the room, for throwing a TV out the window. I'll go ahead and save this and select checkout. I can enter in a title. I can again see that I have this reservation ready. At the very top, I have the option to log in and reserve as a member. So if I get to the screen and I realize, oh no, I never logged in. I see that button right at the top here. I can add this to my calendar. I can even go back and reserve another room. 
So let's say it's, you know, I want to take one bed, but I want to go back and maybe reserve something for someone else. I can go back and add a completely different reservation to the same, uh, to the same order, essentially. I've instead going to go ahead and check out. And then finally, I will enter in my contact information. And all of this is also going to be saved into your non-member database. So when we talk about how non-members populate our database, whenever they make an interaction on your site and they have to enter in contact information, they're getting added to your non-member database. They're also getting added with a specific mailing list category. So you're able to separate out non-members who have reserved a resource with just the click of a button. So if you ever want to reach out to non-members in the future, you have that ability. My reservation request has been saved and I'll be notified when it gets approved. So that's that approval process kicking in. The non-member does not have the ability to make that reservation. It's still listed as reserved. So someone can take a look at that and, you know, perhaps opt not to reserve that room or just move on and pick a different room, but it does show up as being reserved or unavailable to other people to make a reservation. And that will stay true until it's been approved or declined. The reason being, of course, is that you don't want to necessarily have multiple people trying to reserve the same resource at the same time. Now, if we go through and we make a reservation as a member, it's going to be the exact same. So I'll go ahead and sign back in as a member. We'll sign in as Colleen and Colleen will make an additional reservation. She's really excited to go skiing with uh, this particular group. So Colleen is visiting the exact same reservation calendar. She can see the exact same thing that non-members are going to see because the reservation options are open to everyone. So let's go ahead and say that Colleen would actually like to reserve this resource maybe on a different time. She'll go ahead and pick the rollout bed. She'll take one for the team here. You'll see the exact same thing as you did when you were reserving a resource as a non-member. So I'll go ahead and say that I'd like this resource for three nights. And here's my price. I can enter in my usage description, just calling this time. And I'll go ahead and continue that reservation process. I'll agree, save and check out. And there may have been a little bit of an issue because I clicked the button one too many times. However, all of the options that you'll see are going to be the exact same. Colleen's going to have the opportunity to add that reservation to her calendar. She'll also have the opportunity to notify other folks if they have uh, a part in that reservation as well. Really what we're doing is showing the process from the front end. You'll notice that we didn't reach a payment page. So once a reservation is approved, that's when the member would actually go in and pay or the non-member would go in and pay for that reservation. The transaction, if you require approval, does not get created until that reservation has been approved. Just like when we're approving memberships, the transaction for the new member does not get created until that membership has been approved. So what I want to do now is I want to go in and take a look at what this is going to look like from the perspective of an administrator, because all we've done so far is reserve a handful of rooms. We haven't approved any of them. We haven't taken a look at what that looks like at all. So let's move from our resource manager. I'm signed in as Martin Smith, the administrator. And I'm going to move to the reservation manager instead. Now, our reservation manager, again, has that familiar search function at the very top of our screen. I am looking at my reservations, not my individual items. If I take a look at my individual items and I select search, it's just going to show me when individual items have been reserved. I really would prefer to look at this as a reservation view because I'm looking at the actual member to see if I need to contact them. So I'm taking a look at all of my reservations that are either with a payment pending, waiting for approval, or final reservations. And I can even backdate this to show all of the reservations that I've had within the last couple of weeks. We have a handful that were finalized. Let's take a look at these reservations that are awaiting approval. So with all of that approval involved, there are a handful of extra steps, but it really benefits us because of the way we've structured our rooms. Now, let's take a look at this sort of logically. When you visit the resource scheduler, 
and you're taking a look at all of the options that we have available. When someone reserves the back room and they reserve the whole room, well, that means that no one can take an individual bed for that entire stay. So because the resource scheduler doesn't automatically close out the individual beds in that room, I, as an administrator, will go in as soon as I approve Manny's reservation, I'm going to block off the ability to reserve individual beds because Manny has already reserved the entire room. The same is true if I've reserved one bed, I then have to go in and say that the whole room reservation is not available because someone's picked off just one bed. So the only option at that point is to reserve additional individual beds in that room. So that's one of the reasons why I've added in that approval process, because I need to go in and as soon as I approve those reservations, I have to block off the others. I also want to make sure that our guests are meeting that minimum stay requirement. And I want to make sure that they've entered in every single person who's going to be staying in that room in their usage description. So I want to just double check a lot of things before I approve that reservation. Now you'll see here that I have done that with the back room. So Manny reserved that room for Friday and Saturday, and I disabled the ability to reserve individual beds during that time. But over here on the right-hand side, I have the front bedroom available, the whole bedroom, and I also have individual beds. And oh boy, I look like I have, it looks like I have a little bit of a problem because Audrey has reserved the entire room, but both Colleen and Blanche have reserved individual beds. Now, when I take a look at that from an administrative perspective, what I'm focusing on is all of the approvals that I have. So if I select approve reservations, I can take a look at all of the reservations awaiting approval, and I can approve any one of those right from this screen. Now I can see that Colleen reserved the front, just one bed, then I can see that Audrey reserved the entire room. Now I can have a pretty decent idea of who reserved what first, just going off of that reference number. So I can see Colleen's the first reference number. Colleen must have reserved that room first. So I'm going to default to Colleen because she got in there first. I'll go ahead and approve Colleen's reservation. Then I can see that Blanche wants that reservation for the other bed that's in that room. And because that bed's available, I'll go ahead and approve that reservation as well. And I'll just go ahead and select approve. And so now those statuses have moved to final. So when you activate the resource scheduler, you're actually going to be accepting payment at that time. But keep in mind that in this case, there isn't a transaction that's going to be created for that. So all of those are just going to move to their final stages. Now let's talk about Audrey's. So I can do a couple of things here. I could have decided, you know what, I want to give Audrey the full room and instead maybe I'll reach out to Colleen and to Blanche just by clicking their name, viewing their contact information, and I can reach out to them separately to ask them if they would be okay with moving to a different room. Uh, you know, I can reach out to them to let them know something's not available, something is available. I can do the same thing for Audrey. So with Audrey, I am going to do a couple of things. I can edit her reservation. I can go in and I can edit Audrey's reservation without talking to her. Maybe I want to talk to her preemptively. I can say, I'll go ahead and edit this reservation. I can change the dates. I can change a different room. Maybe I want to, instead of giving Audrey the front room, I'd like to actually give her the whole corner room instead. I can go ahead and select the corner room. And I can say that I'd like to give it to Audrey for three nights. All of that information still entered in, and I can mark those days as unavailable as soon as I create that reservation for Audrey. Let's say that I would like to go ahead and select this option. Oh boy. Let's go ahead and do this one more time. And I think that that may have been the problem. We'll make sure to let our developers know about that. And I'll go ahead and select next. I'll agree with my final usage. Now, all I did was switch a room, right? I switched Colleen from the front room, or excuse me, I switched Audrey from the front room to a corner room, all from an administrative perspective. So at this rate now, she has a completely different total. Now, if Audrey had already paid for this reservation, that total would be adjusted. So she would end up getting a credit 
to her member account with the remainder of that fee. So instead of paying $1,100, she'd only end up paying $450. I can go ahead and save those changes. I can delete the changes that I've made, which is actually what I'm going to do. So I'm going to instead delete those changes and cancel my edit. Because really the way that I've been doing this is I am not going to move Audrey's reservation without talking to her. Maybe I'd like to send her an email first. Instead, what I'm going to do is I am going to select my reservation details icon and I'm going to cancel Audrey's reservation. And the reason is that an individual individual bed's already been reserved. So I'll go ahead and save this. And now what I can do is I can go back and sort of fix whatever is happening on the front end. I see that someone's already reserved some of those beds. So what I'm going to do is I, as an administrator, need to make sure that those beds are blocked off because someone can go in and reserve the entire front room again. And then we're up in the same, we're uh, you know experiencing the same issue that we were before. So because the individual beds have been reserved, I am going to say, well, that means that you can't reserve the entire room. I'm going to mark the next three days as unavailable. Or I believe it is four. I'll mark those as unavailable. And now we can see that you can't actually reserve the entire room. So once you have that set up where you're either reserving the whole room or you're reserving an individual bed, all it takes is just making sure that you keep up with who's reserved what, so you can mark those items as unavailable, logically thinking based on who's in, who has reserved an individual bed and who's reserved the entire room. Now let's take a little bit of a break and we'll talk about where we've come from and where we're going. Now, reserving a resource as a member and a non-member, we looked through both of those items and we talked about reserving a single bed versus a whole room. So there's going to be a price difference. They both required approval. And it's just a matter of, as an administrator, making sure that you block off the options that are no longer going to be available. Let's talk about managing reserv your reservations through your member profile. So I am logged in as Colleen. So Colleen is going to visit her member profile. Every member has access to their own member profile. And when you have the resource scheduler included under your histories, where you're able to view events that you've registered for, I can view my reservation history and anything that has already happened. I can see that it's been approved. I can see how much I would have paid for it. And I also have the ability to edit and delete my individual reservations. So as a member, I can go in and make these changes. I have the exact same ability to edit and mess with my own reservation as an administrator does. I can change my reservation from one room to a completely different room, essentially what you're doing as an administrator, but just from a member's perspective and for their own reservation. Now, if that resource requires approval, those changes will be pending until that's been approved by an administrator. So that approval process never goes away. The only time your approval process goes away is if you are reserving resources as an administrator, even if you're reserving them for another member. Of course, being an administrator, you bypass that approval process. Now, a couple of other things that we went through. So we went through managing reservations as an administrator. We took a look at approving and declining those reservations and even making changes to a reservation. So you can move someone into an entirely different room. You can block out days. So we looked at that, customizing those options. We blocked out days on a weekly basis. We also blocked out individual sections based on who was reserving individual rooms or individual beds. Now we talked about the notification email. Let's talk about a couple of other things. We're going to go right back into our administrative view. And if I take a look at my reservation manager, we'll see that I have a little email icon next to all of the reservations that have been finalized. So you won't see this until the reservation has been finalized. I have the ability to resend that confirmation email to the person who's reserving. And it also goes to all of the folks that they've included who should get notified for that particular reservation.
Now, you also have some system emails that pair with this as well. So if you haven't taken a look at your system emails in a while, just give those a once over. We have a lot of videos and tutorials that talk about all of our emailing capabilities. Your system emails are those boilerplate emails that get sent out based on different actions that users are taking on your site. So if you are using your resource, resource scheduler as a way to dole out these rooms, you might want to take a look at that language just to make sure that it's more specific to your situation. It's more specific to what you're actually using that resource scheduler for, which might be slightly different than the way it was designed. And that's okay. Now, before we open it up for some questions, we'll talk about just some basic tips and tricks. I made a chart. I had an entire list of criteria that I wanted to meet. It took me a, a little bit to get these set up. It's not going to take you forever, but it is going to take more than 10 minutes to set up these reservations. So this is something that you just should make sure that you sit down, grab yourself a beverage and just get it all out there within a day. It's going to save you a lot of time to take a look at what category settings can be applied to which resources. There were a lot of moving parts in this for me. So I really had to think, okay, what am I bringing in from the category level? Where can I save that time? Where can I cut corners and make this a little bit easier for myself? Remember to block out those days where a reservation has been made for a room or a bed. It'll save you a headache. And remember to take a look at that reference number. So when we get into the space where you have a really, really coveted trip and you have a lot of people booking reservations at the same time, take a look at those reference numbers. That's going to give you a good idea of who came first, essentially. And use that member test account. And of course, a test non-member account, if you'd like. Those test accounts are going to be really valuable to you, not just in this case, but really when you're testing anything on your site, you want to make sure that you're not just sitting in your admin chair and experiencing things from an administrative perspective. You want to make sure that that experience is seamless for your members as well. And the only way to really do that is to test it out for yourself. Uh, you know, we have a webinar that we recently did setting up and test driving your website. We talk about the experience that your members have when they visit your site, either for the first time or repeatedly, you want that experience to be joyful and delightful for them. So testing that out for yourself is extremely important. And Devin, how are we doing on questions? We're doing great. We got a few interesting ones. Um, the first question, I would say probably the most important one we got was, uh, is there a way to um, mark multiple reservations as, uh, or mark multiple slots as unavailable at the same time, uh, either for like, say a whole room as you had it set up or for a whole category, just for a certain day, if someone's holding an event or some sort? Yes. So that would be where we would want to go for those customized daily options. So I'm going to go back into my resource manager and we can set those items as unavailable for an entire day at either the resource level or the category level. So I'm waiting for my page to load. I won't make the mistake I did last time by clicking the button repeatedly. We'll just give it a moment here, maybe several moments. Is there another question that I can answer in the meantime while we're waiting for the page to load? <laughs> um, yeah, I think this, this might be an easier one to handle is that once approved, do users get a notification about uh, their approval? Yes, they do. Uh, so users will get a notification of whether their reservation is approved or declined. So there, and you'll notice that when we were declining a reservation, we also had the ability to enter in that reason. So the user sees that reason. So to go back to that first question, when we're looking at those individual resources, I can block off an individual resource by going to those customized daily options. So you'll remember that we selected that back room and we made it unavailable for just Wednesday. I can even do this by category. So one of the things that you could do is instead of setting up one category for the entire Airbnb, I could have set up a category for these, let's say the top two individual rooms, which actually would have made it really easy to then disable and enable certain days, right? So instead of having to go into my individual bed A and bed B and disabling those reservations for the day, I could have gone into the category for the back room. 
and disabled that category for the day. It would have saved me a couple of clicks. So really this is just an idea of how you can get this set up for yourself. I used one category, but there are benefits to separating each of these out and maybe even having a separate category for each room that you have or each room that's a whole room plus a separate category for individual beds. So there are a lot of ways that you can set this up to save yourself time and save yourself a handful of clicks here and there. Okay. And then uh, um, along the same vein of my most recent question is how do, how are administrators uh, notified about things that take place on the resource manager? So who is notified when uh, a member makes a change? Yes. So when, and that depends when a member or non-member makes a reservation. So you'll notice that when we have our, let's go back into our resource here. And I believe it's actually at the, yes, my apologies. It is at the category level. So when we were configuring our category and we take a look at our Airbnb and we select that edit icon, we have my contact information. So that contact person is maybe not an administrator. Maybe they're just responsible for reserving the Airbnb and they're the person to come to with questions. And at the very bottom, if we are notifying admins and the contact person, as soon as a reservation is made, that's set at the category level. So that means that the person who is listed as the contact, and you don't necessarily have to have a contact, plus administrators are notified as soon as a reservation is made to the email address that they have listed on their member profile. That gives you that heads up that a reservation requires approval. And if you have that approval setting made, or excuse me, you have that approval setting activated, you're also going to get a notification when someone makes a reservation change that's still going to require that approval. All right. And then I think the last comment for uh, for this would be just to, to reiterate that if someone, uh, if your resource is set up to require approval, there is no way for users to pay for that until they are approved. So there's no, there wouldn't be a scenario where someone pays for it before they are approved for that reservation. That's correct. Yes. And, and it's the exact same way for uh, memberships as well. So we make sure that the transaction actually should be created before we create one. So what you'll, what the user will actually see is they'll see one email that says that their reservation has been approved. Then almost instantly, they'll get a second email letting them know that they have a pending payment and they'll go right back to your website using either their login information, or they can click a link in the email and they'll be able to make a payment right away. Um, and then I, the last question was, how do we get access to the trial sandbox version? Um, you would just call um, uh, support with our phone number on our website, or you can just email support at clubexpress.com and we can get the trial uh, version turned on for you. Yes. And again, you know, keep in mind that it's just like multi-activity events. You know, we hosted a webinar not that long ago, maybe four or five months ago, uh, event calendar for ski clubs. So if you are interested in more things that Club Express can do for ski clubs and how you can manage giant ski trips uh, with, you know, different activities all day long and childcare and hotel reservations, take a look at that webinar. You know, even that kind of event took a little bit to get set up, but you do it once, you know, you do it a couple of times and you get the hang of it. You realize the mistakes that you may have made or, you know, the little things here and there that could have made the next time easier. I did that too. So don't get frustrated. If you are, you know, hitting a little bit of a roadblock, our support team is here to help you. We have a lot of webinars, not just this webinar, but we do have additional webinars and tutorials on the resource scheduler. So when this video is published on our YouTube channel, check back because in the description, I'm going to make sure I link to both of those resource scheduler or all of the resource scheduler uh, webinars and tutorials that we have. So you'll have a lot of material to go off of, including our support teams. So take a deep breath and we hope that you enjoy using the resource scheduler. All right. Well, if there aren't any other questions, again, you can always contact support if you have more questions or if you're curious to learn a little bit more about the resource scheduler. We want to thank you for joining today's webinar. Don't forget that you can find more webinars on our website, clubexpress.com slash calendar. You can sign up for those there. So thank you again for watching and we'll see you in the next webinar. Bye everyone.